diplomatic trip. Defense Secretary Robert Gates meets with top leaders in Israel to discuss an ongoing partnership. We'll have the latest. Medal of Honor, pomp and circumstance at the Pentagon as Admiral Mike Mullen presides over commemoration celebrations. TRICARE coverage, DOD dependents leaving Japan in a hurry are getting a huge helping hand in healthcare. And ski therapy. Wounded warriors are turning to a soothing and snowy method of rehabilitation. Around the Services starts right now. Now, proudly serving those who serve. This is Around the Services. Welcome, I'm Petty Officer Michael Wilkin. Defense Secretary Robert Gates is headed back to the United States after week-long meetings in the Middle East. The secretary met with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Palestinian Prime Minister Salam Fayyad in Israel Friday. During a news conference, the secretary talked about the great partnership the two countries shared. We've had a, a long-standing uh, security relationship between the United States and Israel, but I think I can say uh, confidently that <clears throat> at no time in the history of our two countries has our defense and security relationship been stronger than it is today. We both face a, a region that is in uh, turmoil uh, that will present uh, challenges, uh, but it also uh, potentially presents opportunities. That turmoil the secretary is referring to includes the situation in Libya. Secretary Gates said the matter will ultimately have to be settled by the Libyans. After the meeting, he left for Jordan to meet with King Abdullah. Well, NATO has agreed to assume command and control of coalition operations enforcing the no-fly zone over Libya. During a Pentagon press conference Friday, the director of the Joint Staff, Vice Admiral William Gortney, expressed the purpose of Operation Odyssey Dawn. The coalition is working very hard to make it very hard for Colonel Gaddafi and his troops to kill their own citizens and destroy property. But that is, as I described yesterday, a delicate mission. We are charged under the UN mandate with protecting the people of Libya. So nothing we do must put them at greater risk than the risk they faced at the hands of the Gaddafi regime. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton made the announcement late Thursday from Washington. She noted that the number of U.S. planes involved in the operation declined as aircraft from other partner nations ramped up. NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen said that a close partnership between NATO and its allies is crucial for the mission's success. We are taking action as part of the broad international effort to uh, protect civilians against the attacks by the Gaddafi regime. For more on the situation in Libya and Defense Secretary Gates' travels, you can head online to defense.gov. Now to our other top story, the 150th anniversary of the Medal of Honor. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen, commemorated the occasion during a special ceremony in the Pentagon's Hall of Heroes. Marine Sergeant Ashley Bryant takes us there. The Congressional Medal of Honor Society and Foundation marked the 150th anniversary of the medal here at the Pentagon's Hall of Heroes on Friday. Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Mike Mullen, hosted the historic ceremony, recognizing the foundation and evolution of the medal itself, something he called iconic and quintessentially American. This medal was conceived amid the strife of the Civil War during one of the darkest chapters of our young nation's history and was signed into law by the leader most revered for saving it. And while the Medal of Honor's form and criteria have evolved somewhat from its early history, I would like to think that President Lincoln would be most pleased with what this singular honor stands for today. The services each presented a brief look at their own history with the Medal of Honor and took time to salute the medal's recipients and recognize the significant role the medal itself has played in military culture and heritage. From Little Round Top to Mount Suribachi, from atop Pork Chop Hill to the Korngal Valley, these heroes, and I do not use that word lightly, have demonstrated how just one American can not only make a difference, but can often make history. More than 30 Medal of Honor recipients, whom Admiral Mullen called the bravest of the brave, were on hand alongside senior military members, Pentagon officials, and civilian leaders to commemorate the Medal of Honor, what started as a rather obscure act of Congress, and 150 years later has become one of the nation's most elite and revered symbols of military heroism. 
Reporting from the Pentagon, I'm Marine Sergeant Ashley Bryant. The Medal of Honor symbolizes the ultimate in bravery and valor, but many recipients say it's a huge responsibility to bear. Ahead in the show, we'll reflect on some of the challenges of being a Medal of Honor recipient. We're headed downrange for the latest news out of Afghanistan in just a few minutes, but first, let's go to the Pentagon Channel Newsroom for the latest headlines.